This is a rebellion, isn't it? I call it aggressive negotiations. The garbage will do! Hi, and welcome to the Trash Compactor podcast, Star Wars from the female point of view. I'm MC, and I'm here with... April. It's been a month since we had an episode. Later, we'll be getting into our roundtable, which will be talking about uh, life in fandom after The Last Jedi, so mostly talking about fanfic. But before then, we have some news to catch up on. We've started the final couple episodes of Rebels, and actually at time of record, there's only three more episodes left, so one more Monday. But there's been some news that has come out of, well, I don't know where it's come out of, but, you know, somebody's discovered it. But Lucasfilm has apparently been trademarking Star Wars Resistance as a title. And everybody's thinking this might be the next animated show because Dave Filoni has hinted that the next series is going to be post Return of the Jedi. So something like possibly even between like Bloodline and The Force Awakens or even like sooner? Uh, all I've heard is post Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Which is uh, like, which is like yeah, yeah, 30 years. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, any that, God, if anything that actually went into how the First Order came about, I would be like, yes. Because <laughs> yeah. that's still all so vague. They're like, we went into wild space with the fleet and the remnant. And then it happened. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, the, the name can be very general because yeah. actually Star Wars Rebels, for the first season or so, they're not really part of the rebellion. I mean, you kind of get the yeah. feeling that they, they might be doing something, but it, it plays more like Firefly, where they're, like, basically just merry smugglers. Uh, and then it's like, oh, wait, they're actually doing this for, like, a higher purpose. They can, like, ease into the whole resistance thing. Yeah. I don't want things to be, like, really closely grouped together because we've had this problem with Rebellion Air stuff where you will have, like, we have four movies and a TV show and all of these books and comics that are all centered around what is basically, like, maybe at most five years. True. Yeah. And so I don't want that to happen with the sequel trilogy where everything that they have happening is going to take place within like five years of, and then there'll be 30 years where we don't know what the fuck happens. Right. Yeah. And there's so much like, you know, cause even in the aftermath series, Leia's still just like, I don't really know what Luke's doing. He's somewhere. Yeah, they've been playing super coy with everything to do with Luke and Ben. And I know that they were doing that to preserve the surprise of The Last Jedi. But I don't feel like we're going to be having those same revelations with Episode Nine. Yeah. So let us find out more about them. Yeah. Of course, we are finding out a little bit because uh, they've announced some books that are going to come out along with Solo. Obviously, we've got all of the the little kid books, which, you know, are I'm glad to know they're out there, but I'm probably not going to pay much attention to them. (laughs) Though I did read Chew in the Porgs, which is fucking adorable. Yeah. But they have Last Shot, which is a Han and Lando novel, which is going to span several decades. It takes place, I think, in three time periods. Yeah. Then they've also got Most Wanted, which is about Han and Kira. And I guess it's uh, when they're they're kids on Corellia. Yeah. Which will be really cool to learn more about Corellia. Yeah. No, Corellia is not something that even in the EU, I never felt that we got to know it all that well. I'm... I, I feel like it's always been kind of like this of the major planets was the most mysterious. Yeah. And we're also getting a new Lando miniseries for comics, 
this one will actually look like Donald Glover rather than Billy D. Williams. That'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah. And, and actually, the first cover is gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Then, um, obviously, we've got the the kids stuff and there will be art books and reference guides and that sort of thing. But yeah. So we do have some new stuff that's going to be coming out for Solo. And they just released an excerpt from Last Shot. And the specific excerpt takes place in... It, it's their third time period. Because if um, the first one is right after Lando first gets the Falcon. Uh-huh. The second is after Han gets it. And the third is, I'd say... What's it, like two years after the Battle of Jakku? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what's that, 7 ABY? <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the reason we're able to, like, pinpoint it so exactly is because the, the scene is, oh, it opens up with Han sleeping with two-year-old Ben Solo. With his foot in his face, which is, like, one of those things where it's, like, as a parent, you're just like, yes, that. <laughs> yeah. Who, whoever wrote it face. definitely, yeah. uh... Experienced that. Or yes. has friends that have experienced it and have talked about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that was um pretty uh intensely emotional. And there's so much going on in it, really, that you could unpack. Like, I only read it once, but there's so much that you can infer about what's going on in their lives and sort of... Han's feelings about life and parenthood like it's a short excerpt but it's a really good one yeah I'm excited to read the book which I was excited about anyway because I love Lando and like any sort of thing that'll make me possibly more excited for (laughs) the Han Solo movie is good (laughs) I was just looking up the writer of that particular book to see if there was anything that jumped out at me that they had done but yeah a lot of people were really excited um it's not an author I'm familiar with but it's not it's probably just a genre thing, but I know yeah. a lot of people were super excited um, to hear that uh, Daniel Jose Older was mm-hmm. writing this. So, you know, that's pretty awesome. Wow, he's my age. That makes me feel real great. Um. <laughs> yeah, I know that that kind of stuff happens to me, too. Yeah. Uh, it does look like it has written several series. Yeah. At least one of them focuses on characters of color. That that's like the main thing Wikipedia says is that uh, it's very uh, critical of like the Hunger Games whitewashing the character of Katniss. So sweet. So his Lando is going to be awesome. Yeah, is what's implied here. Yeah, that's awesome. basically that's what, <laughs> what what I'm thinking. It's like he probably got the assignment, and it's like, can I write about Lando rather than Han? Right. <laughs> Oh, cool. That's exciting. So what else do we have going? Sorry, I'm still thinking about baby Ben lying on Han's chest. I know. The fact that he called him big guy made me just want to curl up in a ball and like... (laughs) Because, you know, he's not big then. He's a baby. Yeah. He's going to be a big guy. And I was just like, oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just... I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I kind of love the implication that Han stopped being a general to be a father. Yeah, he's like a house husband who goes to meetings. <laughs> so much better than in Legends, where he freaking stops being a general because he's jealous that Leia is being romanced by Fabio. What? <laughs> the courtship of Princess Leia. Oh, yeah. Where oh, Leia God. is being romanced. By- he's freaking space Fabio. Wow. And Han ends up resigning his commission because basically Mon Mothma is trying to pimp Leia out to oh Space God. Fabio. Yeah, that's it's terrible. It's not a good book. It's that's not a good terrible. book. I'm glad I never... I, that's when I saw around and was like sort of interested and in, I don't think I ever read it. I may have and just blocked it out, but... We're going to be getting into this month's roundtable. Uh, we'll be doing that along with... Eleanor and Bronwyn, so let's join them in talking about the Star Wars fandom post Last Jedi. Notorious, 
just scandalous. Can't handle this black mist. Work the twist. America, hit it. Welcome to the Trash Compactor Podcast, Star Wars from the female point of view. I'm MC, and I'm here with... April. Bronwyn. Elena. Today's roundtable, we're talking about fic in the fandom after The Last Jedi and how it has changed our perspective on things. Obviously, when a new movie comes out, everything changes because it's, I mean, books change things a little, but not quite as much as like a full movie. Yeah. I think a lot of that has to do with the audience as well, because like not everyone reads the books, whereas everyone's going to, if they're in the fandom, they're going to see the movie. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Like, and it's like casual and serious fans alike. So, you know, and I think a lot of people were surprised. I think what I loved about The Last Jedi was that both serious fans and casual fans were like, whoa, what yeah. is going on here? So that was quite cool. Um, so... Um first question can just be like super general um do you guys feel more or less inspired to write or to read fic after the last jedi much more yeah definitely much more for me because i actually uh the first uh star wars fic that i wrote at all was right after the second uh the last jedi trailer dropped so um basically the last jedi is sort of the entirety of my fic writing <laughs> in terms of Star Wars. Yes. <laughs> it was kind of weird when I watched The Last Jedi because I was so thrown by it that for a moment I was just like, do I even like Star Wars anymore? Have I spent these <laughs> last two years just invested in something that I don't like? And it was just like, I had this massive crisis, which is which was great because then I sat down and I read some fic and I re- I think it was like something from April actually I read some fic or something that utterly destroyed me and I was like on the floor <laughs> weeping from feelings and I thought yeah I think I still like Star Wars I, th- <laughs> I think I'm I think I'm I think I'm more influenced to read and write fic now I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not going away from Star Wars what, what was it that you think threw you so hard about it I think it's because I had this like because obviously we were all um like in the, especially in the Raylo fandom there was this big thing that Kylo was going to come to Acto or Acto whatever however you pronounce it um and mm. he was going to fight Ray on the cliff and she was going to fall off the cliff so you're sort of like waiting the whole time for that because I got and then it was not never happened so I was like in this constant state of like when's it gonna happen when's it gonna happen and then it never <laughs> happened I was like oh okay um oh but wait a minute we got oh yeah oh you know what I th- yeah, so it was like a lot of just sort of like oh mm, like that and so but the thing is we got the throne scene which was so much better than any cliff scene yeah <laughs> to yeah. be honest yeah Claire you hadn't written a sequel trilogy fic before had you no I hadn't like um the only fic that I'd written after. The Force Awakens was set during A New Hope, and it was a total troll fic. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, as much as I loved The Force Awakens, it just did not inspire me to write. I think it was because it ended on such a cliffhanger yeah. that you knew more was coming. I mean, I obviously know that this ended on a cliffhanger and more is coming, but I mean, also, I didn't... I enjoyed ships after The Force Awakens, but I, I didn't, like, really invest in anything. Mm-hmm. But as I'm watching this, it's like, oh, my God, I'm total Raylo trash. <laughs> yeah, for me, with uh, The Force Awakens, I really enjoyed it as a Star Wars movie. But it didn't sort of have the depth, especially in terms of characterization for a lot of different characters um, like The Last Jedi did. So for me, I really enjoyed seeing what other people could do with it. But I didn't feel like I necessarily had enough play to sort of mold anything yeah. meaningful from it um especially for uh like characters like poe like he was just sort of a little too two-dimensional uh in the force awakens for me to really ship him with anyone i mean like i could understand the appeal of things like storm pilot but i couldn't actually like craft anything myself if that yeah. makes sense yeah. i think that may be too because i remember loving storm pilot at first but then I like ended up being more into like as far as finships like Finray because those two characters were more real to me and it's like I don't have a problem developing a character from scratch pretty much I mean you know there wasn't really much to work with with Molly Hooper at first and Sherlock and I was like mm-hmm. you know yeah. all about that but like I think just having Finray being there was more like 
it in those two characters just being so compelling yeah interested me more than storm pilot even though i love looking at storm pilot art i love it yeah <laughs> you know yeah i'm exactly the same way with the force awakens i think you know i wrote a lot of fic for it but i wasn't inspired as like you know my biggest fic is a, is a modern au and i wrote some in universe stuff but i think like the Last Jedi has really taken me back to, you know, actually wanting to write things in universe. And I've got like a longer fic planned for in universe instead of just one shots, you know? So I think that's kind of how for me, it became this thing so much more. And I wasn't having to like, and I think that is the thing, the cliffhanger, there were so many threads that were unresolved. And I think there's that fear of something being just so canon, like divergent that you're like, Oh, (laughs) do I really want to go there before I have more info? You know? But the, the the force awakens i was just like i was really i had a few ideas running around in my head but i stuck mostly to the stuff that i knew from my old fan like historical au's i didn't really go into in in universe because i was just terrified of in universe because you go on wikipedia and it's talking about like hydro spanners and and like yeah. you know um the can like lullab- um lullabies about you like set to cantina band <laughs> and stuff like that and like really weird <laughs> stuff yeah. and you're just like sort of avoid that by never using yeah. wikipedia ever. <laughs> and many of people like kylo ren vivo who like i think that she just knows lore like oh god out the wazoo just like off the top of her, her head. knowledge is like, amazing. she's so steep so you're like reading her stuff and you're just like i will never be able to absorb that much information to yeah. be able to like be comfortable yeah. with it but you know it's the thing it's just like it's like anything it's practice it's reading it's also being like you know what i can make up whatever i want i think that's the yeah. freedom yeah. part of it is just being like it's not like you're gonna have fanboys reading it and you know exactly yeah. hopefully not coming into your <laughs> comments and telling you you were wrong about some lightsaber form you know <laughs> i once had someone come after me because of a grammar error in my fic so so i was kind of oh, just a bit like yeah, yeah. i want to risk it no no i'm not gonna risk it oh. no so but actually what reading really think, and i think to be honest april just dragged me into star wars because i was just like i saw her going over to fandom from sherlock and i was just like I like Star Wars, and then I saw The Force Awakens, and then I read her fic, and then I read some more fic, and I was basically dragged down into Star Wars hell. <laughs> and I'm very happy well, to that's be awesome. here. <laughs> well, and you can, like, you know, in turn blame Petra for that because she's the one that really yeah. sparked my interest in Raylo. Yeah. So. <laughs> Petra's to blame <laughs> for everything. It all starts there, yes. <laughs> so, kind of on the same tangent as far as, like, new information from the last jedi like did you have any theories or head cannons that were just completely scuttled that you just can't even imagine anymore even like in a canon divergence so many just so many <laughs> luke i feel like i'm the complete opposite yeah. <laughs> but you go first, um, go first just luke's demeanor i wasn't like it was totally left field to, i thought he'd be a bit grumpy but i didn't realize he'd buy like a hermit <laughs> I was just like, I didn't really twig that you have to be a hell of a long her- a, a hermit for a hell of a long time to get that scruffy a beard. So I was just like, I didn't really, I did, I really did not see the green milk thing coming, or the or the jumping for fish, oh, like the Skywalker fishing. Oh. That is so Skywalker. Just okay, let me get this massive pole and just jump so I stab a fish. It's just like it's incredibly Skywalker. I thought he would be sadder. Rather than grumpy. I thought he would just be really, yeah, really sad. Yeah, that's it. I wasn't thinking he'd be a grumpy old man. I think I thought he would be a bit more like Retur- end of Return of the Jedi Luke. So sort of just like really sad. But then but then Leia sort of like puts an, her arm around him and he's okay. You know, yeah. so. That level of apathy you reach in depression where you're just like, I don't care. And that like when he says leave me alone to her. Is that, was that his first yeah. line? Let's go, go away. Go away was his first yeah. line in 35 years, yeah. right? Which is so meta. Yeah. I can't it's believe like, it. It's just like... <laughs> or leave me. Yeah, I forget. Yeah, I think. I don't, yeah, I think that his yeah his first line is something just really just like yeah. uh, <laughs> it's not epic at all. I think all, it is. To, it, I think his first sound that he makes is, <sighs> which is which is kind of, which is so <laughs> in character for a guy who's one of his first lines was. But I was going into Tashi Station to pick up some power converters. <laughs> you know, it's so in character. Yeah. It just like brings him full circle. And I think a lot of uh, like 
people I know sort of had it right that this was not going to be a relationship where they were going to fall into a mentor-mentee relationship that was amicable, like, right away. You know, and some people expected that. Um, it's maybe some people who thought the relationship might have been a paternal yeah. one. <laughs> um, but, in the literal like, sense. Yeah, in the literal sense. <laughs> Just adults around. Um, so... I think they were a little, some people were a little more shocked, but I think some of us at least thought he wasn't going to want to train her right away. Even before we started getting promo materials, we were like, this is going to be not easy for either of them because it being easy would be boring, you know? Yeah, yeah training mon- montage would have looked cool, but also it'd be like, okay, Same cool, this before. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I feel like if they had set it up to just be another Yoda or another Obi-Wan, it would have, like people might have thought that they would have wanted that, but I feel like coming out of it, you wouldn't have felt refreshed. You wouldn't have felt like you got anything yeah. new. It would have been the sort of same complaints after The Force Awakens. Like, oh, I remember this exact montage, yeah. this exact sort of shot, this exact yeah. plot thread. Yeah, I think he yeah. had it echo it just enough with some uh, beats and then uh, you know, subverted it with others that it did feel similar enough that we we're like, okay, I get this, but it wasn't just... Sh- super shocking Mm -hmm. all the time it was shocking sometimes but not all the time to be nice to luke who i love he is no yoda he's never gonna like he's he (laughs) tried to burn down the forestry but only yoda can set alight the forestry with lightning as a force ghost that's the that's the yoda Mm -hmm. we know and love and luke (laughs) just can't be that (laughs) he's never gonna be in he's never gonna be a tiny green alien who gives no care whatsoever (laughs) one of my big head cannons obviously was that was actually Finn's trajectory. Like, I forgot that he's still running away from the Resistance at the end of the movie. He's only there for Rey. The only reason yeah. he's with the Resistance is because yeah. Chewie picked him up with Rey and they took him back to the Resistance yeah. and they're caring for him. That's the only reason. And I kind of forgot that. And I so I sort of built up. I think yeah, I built up in my did. head that over the next two over the next two years that he was going to be this big Resistance hero. But and then TLJ was running. Yes. Oh, no, 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 no! Remember, he was running away from the resistance at the end of For- the Force Awakens. So we were all Rose, basically. She was our yeah. audience surrogate there, pretty much. You know. Yeah. Exactly. He literally says, "I'm just here for Ray in the Force Awakens." I think yeah. because we've had so many really good fix that, like, and some of them were doing mm. time skips, so it made a lot of sense. We had a lot of fix that had Finn being much more gung ho, with Finn sort of being a little bit closer to. Poe's personality yeah and I think because we had such sort of like oversaturation of that to a certain extent it became really hard for especially if people read a lot of that kind of fic it became very hard to distinguish the fan and fan from canon fan and that's really Mm -hmm. the hard thing about having virtually no time skip in a universe but two years in the real world is that there's a lot of time and you feel like all that time has passed and it hasn't. And you think, yeah, he was going to get Ray off of Starkiller and then probably try to convince her to go with him elsewhere, far away from mm. all of it, as far as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and you forget that. And then you're like, yeah. oh, yeah. It's like he mm-hmm. just woke up. Like his first word, he like, and that's the thing that I, I remember, I don't remember how long it was after watching The Force Awakens when I realized, I was like, oh my God, when Finn wakes up, he's not going to know if yeah. she's alive. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So yeah, that immediate. I thought it was you know obviously perfect that that was the first thing on his mind when yeah. he woke up. So yeah, Finn. Like I think that gives us a lot more to work with as far as Finn's struggle and sort of even though he's fully committed now at the end of the Last Jedi, you still get to develop him going from okay, I want to do this to really finding his place within. Like what's he? What is his role going to be? That's actually something I think The Last Jedi kind of wasted a little bit because what beauty there could have been if if Finn had thought, oh my god, what if she's been kidnapped by the First Order or something or something mm. like that. They kind of wasted that a little bit, but I still love that they sort of reminded you that no, he is not part of the Resistance. He is not part of the Resistance. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like he probably got the knowledge of where she was off screen, but yeah, I feel like they could have maybe given us like one or two more yeah. beats one or two more lines that just sort of really drive it home that the last time he saw ray she had gotten hit against a tree and fell and un- yeah. fallen unconscious into the snow yeah well i mean they did have he goes up to poe and poe's like he must have a million questions and then finn just immediately goes where's ray and then they cut to where ray is so i assume that poe is like explaining yeah. to 
than what yes. happened to him during that moment. Now, uh, what, one thing that I think there's obviously been a lot of controversy surrounding The Last Jedi, particularly in characters that we've been discussing, Luke and Finn. Uh, one thing I found with my own experience with different fandoms is when I get into writing fic, and I like one fandom that I know this happened with was Harry Potter. I got into it uh, after Goblet of Fire and was they had like the three year break where there's no books. So I wrote like a shit ton of fic in that time. And then when new stuff came out, I didn't like it as much. And I think that hap- that has happened with The Last Jedi, where you have so many people who have developed their own ideas of what these characters are. And then when we get the canon versions of them and it's not the same, that people get very upset because it's like, but this is not the character that I've been writing about. Yeah. Was there any, gosh, now I think this other question is probably irrelevant to most of us because you guys had pretty much not written post TFA, but I was going to like, as far as, was there anything that you'd written before you actually saw the movie that you would feel like you wanted to go back and revise? Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah, so much stuff. Like, pretty much everything. <laughs> I think also, I think some of my fic yeah. where Kylo's really dark and broody and, and like, really angsty. And then <laughs> TLJ went, like, nah, he's kind of a nerd who loves books. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right, okay. Um, Like, there was one fic I've got that, that is an yeah. accidental marriage fic where where basically through, a, through mistranslation by Kylo, Ray and Kylo end up married. So like, it's a long story. I love that fic though. I love that fic. Yeah, thank you. Um but the thing is I what I do have to go what I do feel like going back and revising just like the attitude between Kylo and Ray. And also probably I'm gonna have to find some way to go back and sort of link up the Luke that was gonna be in that fic with the Luke that we got in, in The Last Jedi. Because the Luke in that fic was going to be quite a lot kinder. He was going to be part of the Resistance. And obviously The Last Jedi completely threw, threw, that, threw me for a loop there. So, But yeah, and Kylo's going to have to be a little yeah. bit less moody. He's going to be like, Rrr. he's going to have to be less, Rrr, and more, yeah. <laughs> like that. To sort of answer both uh, this question and a little bit of the last question, for me, I didn't actually have that many of my headcanons or characterizations uh, sort of debunked. But I, I think the biggest thing that I am currently having a problem with, and I think I've, I've seen this from a lot of different people, is the fact that she calls him Ben. Yes. Oh, God, yeah. I wrote three fic uh, and like half of one before I actually saw The Last Jedi. And in all of them, I have yeah. her calling him Kylo. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> It's so weird to read it now. And even in the great big no, I'm just like, this is so weird to write yeah. his name as Kylo. It's And I never thought yeah. I was going to be that person. Yeah, and so for me, like, I knew when I was writing the three of them, because I, I wrote them literally after the second trailer, but before uh, The Last Jedi came out, I knew it was going to be Joss. I knew I was going to uh, either just have to abandon the series or turn it into sort of a canon divergence AU. And so the two biggest things that I'm having to fix are, I mean, the actual plot point of I thought that uh, Kylo and Rey were going to sort of leave both sides and go off together but then the other biggest thing is literally just his name i have to sort of headcanon or rewrite an episode to explain why she went back to calling him <laughs> kylo yeah the rayla void was talking about that too in one of her fics she's really just like this is so weird i can't even deal with like her calling him kylo in this fic you know the yeah. thing is what annoys me about it is that i spent two years bending over backwards creating au's and a backstory for why kylo would call himself kylo making it make sense in the in the context of like a victorian church like trying to make it trying to make this name sound possible and then she goes and calls him ben and i'm just like ah this is so simple why why it did help me with the great big no as far as like whenever we got to thanksgiving and his family was calling him Ben and I just decided yeah. he's not going to get mad about it. I was just like, it, when I originally, because I that scene had been sort of in my head for a long time and I was just like had thought about that being the catalyst for the argument that happens I was just like, no, he's just going to be like whatever about them calling him by his name. Yeah, The whole Kylo Ren Ben thing is that 
because I grew up on Pride and Prejudice and all those sort of repressed sexuality BBC period dramas. So <laughs> I had this thing where it would be a s- series of stages. So when they were enemies, she'd literally just call him Ren. Then when then when the f- they were friends, she'd call him Kylo. And then when they were lovers, she'd call him Ben. And the Last Jedi kind of just did that entirely in one movie, and I was spending and I was envisioning like ten chapters yeah. until she yeah. called him Kylo for the first time. So, so it's kind of just having, having to sort of <laughs> match that with because I think we were all thro- I was definitely thrown for a loop when she first called him Ben. I think I remember squeezing my mum's knee so hard that she leaned over to me and went please squeeze your own knee. This is really hurting. <laughs> so I was just like, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> and um, so I, the first time she called him Ben, I was just like, whoa, 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 that was not supposed to happen until the last scene of episode nine. What are you doing, Rian Johnson? <laughs> well, and I think it'll be amazing too if JJ, like, because I've experimented in what I'm writing now with the idea of her reverting back to calling him Kylo to oh, his yeah. face as a way to hurt him. I think, you know, that would be a cool thing for JJ to sort of experiment with, maybe, if he had that urge mm-hmm. to do that. These are his OCs, <laughs> after all, you know. Um, but, uh, I need to go back and revise for fucking Rebels, because, oh. of course, Rebels is now airing, and I've there's a lot of Rebels in my fic. And I'm like, oh my god, why didn't I think of this, like, before I started writing? Why didn't yeah. I just go really big? That's the thing about writing serials, you know? You're just like, oh... You know, I've been writing this for however long, and then other stuff comes out, and you're like, well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. at a certain point, we all, like, when we're writing serially, we just sort of have to decide what's the canon we're going to care about, and what's the canon we're going to say, yeah, I know it's I know it's yeah. not this, but yeah. this is how it's going to be in this fic, and <laughs> yeah. everyone's just going to have to buckle in and deal with it. I remember that happening yeah. with... um. Sherlock whenever the biggest thing that screwed everybody over with Sherlock was the stuff about his parents <laughs> oh yeah because everyone had like really dark backstories and then and then they're just like two a nice couple <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah they were super dark I know which was a, I think it's just an yeah. example of a writer yeah. trolling us hard I love it when creators obviously troll us because it like it's kind of an engagement with fandom because they're saying, okay, you want to create yeah. a dark backstory, we admire your creativity, but take this and create something out of that now. Create this thing that's totally antithesis to your fandom, and and create something out of that. And so you're just like, okay, I've got new building blocks, but I don't know how to play with them yet. That's how I felt about the Rimperer thing. Like I was so against, it. and I know I've talked about this before on the podcast even but in terms of fic yeah having to it opens up doors you know that were closed to you before when you were like i was like no if he's going to be the emperor that's terrible that's awful he's never coming back if that happens and you're like oh so if it happens like that though (laughs) yeah we never guessed that if he was emperor he'd be going yep fire all guns on that one guy i don't like we never figured we never we never guessed that would happen Oh, how embarrassing. Yeah. yeah, for me, I never was really into the whole Remper genre of fics, but that was just because I was never really into sort of the darker Kylo characterization. So for me, like, I sort of equated the whole Remper storyline with him necessarily enjoying it and liking yes. it and being evil. And I didn't really predict that it could be done in this way where. Uh, he gets everything he wanted or he thinks he wanted and then it's just horrible and you can yeah. see him actually just losing everything at the same time. I didn't envision that because for me it was always tied with this much darker Kylo that exactly. didn't necessarily speak to me when I was yeah. doing fic. It's to borrow another something else from the Sherlock fandom, it's, it's the dark fuck prince. That's... <laughs> <laughs> None of us wanted that for Kylo. Yeah. And yeah, like I was not like behind the whole Remperor thing. Like I was actually like really certain that Kylo was going to turn to the light side at the end of this movie. Yeah. And that obviously that didn't happen. And what a coincidence that that's the very first thing that happens <laughs> in the first chapter of the first book that I should write. <laughs> Well, I think that it kind of mirrors in a way because, like, it's so funny because people have been saying, you know, we don't want this to be an easy thing for him. He can't just turn. And then they get it, this longer journey, and the same people are like, well, that's that. He's never changing. And it, it's so funny because it's exactly the Zuko arc. Like, for anyone who's watched Avatar The Last Airbender, 
Uh, has any have any of y'all watched that or no? I, I know of it through gift sets and Tumblr. <laughs> I, I know enough about it that I know what, yeah. Basically, you have this character who's the antagonist for the first two and a little bit seasons. And he gets this arc at the end of the second season where you really think he's going to turn against his father. He's going to turn against the Fire Nation and go off and be uh. good with the good guys. And then he doesn't. He sort of doubles down and supports his father. That doesn't stop him from getting one of the most beautiful redempti- yeah. redemption arcs in the third season. <laughs> like, yeah, all of us so saying, mad. he's Space Zuko. Like, this is literally what happened. I've seen people get really yeah. mad about that comparison. Like, they just are like, no, he's not Zuko. I think they're forgetting the fact that Zuko wasn't Zuko when it was first airing either, though. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of people did not think that he was going to get a redemption arc. Oh, well, yeah, like... it's, it's, it's like the whole thing with, um, <laughs> you know, people talking, comparing his backstory to Anakin's. And it's like, well, we didn't know Anakin's backstory for 16 years. You can't, you can't compare characterization that had one movie to one or now two movies to happen and a characterization that had six movies to happen like that's not the same thing that's the funny thing is that everyone's like we're in the middle of the road and they sort of forget that empire strikes back finished with han frozen in carbonite luke with his hand cut off and leia luke r2 and c3po all looking out into an uncertain future while lando went out to look for han and you're just like the darkest chapter is the middle chapter this is like the formula of star wars it's like Attack of the Clones is, you know, maybe the cheesiest, you know, um, chapter in the in the prequel trilogy, but it is also the darkest chapter. I would actually say that Revenge of the Sith is the darkest, but that's because that's the it's the middle chapter when you take it in comparing it to all six of the first movies. Yeah, you can say Revenge of the Sith is definitely the darkest. Sorry, oh, sure. correct myself. How could I forget Re- Revenge of the Sith? How could I forget the iconic no from Darth Vader? Um, how could I forget that? But, um, <laughs> but yeah, Attack of the Clones, it's like it's like the beginning of the end. So it's like you can sense this tragedy coming because it's like you don't look at that wedding at the end of Attack of the Clones and go, oh, well, it's all going to be happy. It's all going to be fine. You look at that and think, oh, no. Right. This is not going to end well. Yeah. Padme's made a good decision. It's like people, you know, it's like putting a desperate, like, happy face on stuff. It's like they're sitting, it's the, it's the cartoon with the dog sitting yeah. in the fire drinking coffee saying this is fine. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to ignore the fact that the love of my life literally <laughs> slaughtered a whole village. This yeah. is fine. We're all yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah. um, mm-hmm. So bringing it back to thick a little bit. <laughs> and to shipping now we're going to talk about shipping yay <laughs> is there anything you found yourself shipping that you did not expect going in Amalyn and Poe I really did not expect to ship <laughs> at all like, I saw their magazine cover together and I thought oh this is going to be the same old yeah. same old work rivals one of them's an older woman the other's a yeah. gung-ho guy yep, we've seen this before and then Amalyn turned around to Poe as he entered a room and said fly boy in a really sort of sarcastic way and I thought oh god I've gone I, I love you. I love you too. I love you. When she's talking to him and it's from like, because she's quite a bit, she's taller than him anyway. And then I think she was wearing taller shoes. And so it's from like, she's looking down at him, talking to him with that look on her face. And I was just, my best friend and I were just elbowing each other. <laughs> and we were just like, what is this? What is What is happening? What's going on? Like, I never expected that to happen at all and it's not just oscar isaac and his like magical chemistry you know because most of what i was feeling i was feeling from her i was just like well okay that's interesting and then it becomes all tragic and stuff you know because it's like oh it never had a chance to be because he doesn't even see her again what i love about it though is the idea that because she did the whole hyperspace thing which has never been done before so technically if jj shipper abrams was to um was to want to bring her back he could literally just have her like you know (laughs) ring up her and go hey so it turns out you survive a hyperspace jump through a ship (laughs) come pick me up i feel like if they could figure out a way to do it like that that would be amazing you know if they were like let's figure out a way to do this that's not gonna make people just be like (laughs) but it'd be a really uh, great like you know (laughs) trajectory for poe i think as well you know but i just i I, what i love about them is that it's literally it is a work office romance but just like among space space battles 
and laser guns you know that's what i love about it the last jedi actually made me completely change how i felt about poe's sexuality because i was completely (laughs) behind the idea of poe being gay yeah but after everything that happened with with holdo and even a little bit with leia i'm like now do you know what i i I think poe's bisexual (laughs) i think he he likes his older ladies (laughs) issues (laughs) yes Oh god. Bring some mommy issues. Mommy you know, issues. there's too many daddy issues in Star Wars. Yeah. Let's just bring some mommy issues in. Gotta balance those scales. What I love yeah. most about the fact <laughs> is that everyone sort of put up this portrait of Poe as this like really sensible guy who knew what was happening and, and was like a great commander and then the last day went, no, he's a hot mess and he needs a good, strong, older woman to take him in hand. <laughs> That's what he needs. He needs a, he needs an Amelin in his life. Uh, I was just like, you watch Amelin, who is this like, Laura Dern, you know, this <laughs> goddess. And I was sort of watching it and I was like Poe. I was like, please call me Flyboy. <laughs> please call, call me Flyboy. Please call him Flyboy, please. <laughs> <laughs> organize organize Poe, please. Organize. Me, put me in the brain. When I'm bored, I love going to fail fandom anon and just like reading through the Star Wars thread. And there are so many requests in like the fic request thing for fix of Poe <laughs> being put over like Holdo's knee or something. Oh my or God. all of this like sub Poe to either uh, Holdo <laughs> or Leia. And I'm like, I want it all. Just give it to me. Oh my God. <laughs> for me, the only ship that. Uh, I went in not expecting because I had uh, shipped Finlo and Raylo and Finray before and I sort of expected to ship Finrose and uh, Amalea, especially when the um, the discussion of the Leia, the Princess of Alderaan book started coming yes. out and it was revealed that uh, Emmeline Holdo is pan. I was just like, okay, it's Carrie Fisher, it's Laura Dern, I'm a queer woman, there's going to be a thing. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and so the only one that really surprised me uh, was Rose and Kylo or Roselo or Kylo. I don't know what we're calling it. Yeah. Um, Rose and I think, I think that has that has to before I know it's a crack ship, but um, the way that I uh, personally tend to ship things is sometimes it's based on what's happening in Canon, but a lot of it is more based on like the potential of their personalities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, cause one of my favorite genres is sort of canon divergence. I use like, um, in the song of ice and fire game of Thrones fandom, like I ship a lot of characters that have literally never met in canon. And so for me, it first started just seeing that one promo fic of them standing of, uh, Kelly and Adam standing next to each other and just the height yes. difference. Yes. <laughs> it was just like, <gasps> it's like at least it's like a foot, right? <laughs> Uh-huh. Like he's a foot it's, taller yeah, than it's, her. It's, oh, yeah, almost exactly. Possibly a little more. Yeah. And then, so that was what started it. But then actually thinking about it more, there were a lot of sort of potential ways that you could go with it because you sort of have them having the inverse of each other in terms of backstories and characterizations yeah. where like she had a really shitty childhood generally, but had a family that loved her. Whereas he had what you would consider mm. a very privileged childhood, but like not a great relationship with his family. Yeah just all these different personality quirks that would have been really interesting to explore especially after that one scene where you see her despite the fact that she's itty bitty kelly marie tran just standing up to phasma and just shooting this huge metal woman like you can definitely tell and then also the way that uh she treats finn who like she had been in awe of minutes before you can tell that like she wouldn't put up with any of kylo's shit yeah, so, like, I think that just has a lot of interesting potential there. Yeah, I think she has almost the p- the potential definitely because it's way more personal her her beef with the first order than Ray's is to have even further to go and how she would feel about him than Ray even has, you know, because like the first like no matter what he had to do with the day to day operations of the first order or whether he was just off killing Jedi, you know, and you know hunting down force sensitives or whatever, like he would still be like the face of the first order in a way for her. And so, and that pretty much the source of all of the misery that she went through as a child. So I think, yeah, there's potential there to really explore. If, is there a way for somebody like her who does seem to have a forgiving heart, but also somebody has to earn that forgiveness. A slash ship that I did not expect to ship, but I started shipping a couple of, when I started really thinking about The Last Jedi and started analysing it in my head, was Finn and DJ. Oh. 
<laughs> yeah, I like, didn't even think of that. Oh my god. Yeah, because like, because just like, also because they just look great together. To be honest, John Boyega and Benicio del Toro look yeah. amazing together. But also because Benicio is like my trash husband. <laughs> they have such like they're both runaways, but Finn chooses to stay while DJ chooses to just carry on leaving. But I also had this like idea for a fic in my head, like a little fluff fic, where DJ's like, Yo, I'm not with the resistance, I'm not with the resistance, but keeps thinking of Finn. So whenever he gets like a bit of intel, he passes Aww. it on to Maz. It's just like, don't tell that guy that I that I sent this to you, right? And she goes, you mean Finn? Because in my head, Maz is the matchmaker of all the couples <laughs> in Star Wars. <laughs> she's like, yes. she's like the Scylla Black of um, who's who was like a host of um, a blind date in, in the UK. She's the Scylla Black of the Star Wars universe. That's who, that's what she is. And uh, oh so I've just got this uh, idea of maybe mm, DJ slowly coming round to being a resistant spy. But he's not a resistant spy. He's like, not officially a resistant spy, but he is a resistant spy because he just <laughs> wants to spend more time with Finn and wants to make Finn smile. And that's thematically like goes along with a lot of like Star Wars stuff. It's like Han's reluctance to join up. It's like um, in aftermath. What was the bounty hunter's name? Oh, I can't one. remember. Yeah, her. She was yeah. like, no, <laughs> I'm not. Like, and then <laughs> she was, and like, yeah, I think that's a. Uh, that would work thematically yeah. for sure. That's yeah. wow. I think a slash ship that I did not expect to. I mean, I don't like super ship it, but it's like I'm kind of interested. Mm-hmm. Ginger pilot did not see that coming at all. Yeah. Uh, the the Poe and and Hux because I'm not really a big Hux fan, but I gained a new appreciation <laughs> for him in this. Yeah, definitely. Uh, just just because he's so pathetic. It's like I can't hate you because you're just so pathetic. So, he's like the Dwight of Star Wars, isn't he? Dwight from The Office. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, yeah. Kylo oh just God. going, <laughs> well, yeah. Hux is going, is it depressed? Just a fancy word for being sad? It's like, you ignorant slut, Hux. Oh my God. False. <laughs> it's Kylo. <laughs> Ginger Pilot surprised me, and I think it's mostly it's just it's based off of that first scene, which yeah. is fun and bantery. You yeah, know. I mean when I when I when I watched that scene so. where he's going General Hugs or something like that, I can't quite remember it. Um, yes. I just thought there's going to be a few yeah. people shipping this, isn't there? After this movie, there's going to be a few people shipping this because it's yeah. it's like it's um because I don't really ship it, and not, and I'm not criticizing it at all. But what's interesting about it is that it's like the acceptable face of hero villain. It's like, because they both hate each other and they're both sort of bantering with each other, but it's like a safe hate, if you know what I mean. Because they're both generals and they're both yeah. leaders, so they're not like in, they're not like on the front line. And they're both men. Yes, this is true. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. That makes it more acceptable, yes. <laughs> a sprinkling of salt on top. I know, I was like, <laughs> not, not bitter at all. Um, yeah, no, I find it interesting. I don't, it's because I'm not attracted. Like I think Donald Gleason is a wonderful actor. I haven't like been attracted to him in like anything. So like, and for me, being attracted to the actor slash character is like a requirement to like hardcore ship something. But I'm like, I don't mind Ginger Pilot too much. I don't want it on my dash mm. necessarily. But you know, a lot of people are into it. And I'm like, that has potential to be interesting, I guess. Yeah, and especially I want to know how much like. Because they're around the same age, I want to know how much they know about each other. You know, what's the guy like? Because that whole that whole kind of your mom joke that that didn't really work that well, but it was interesting if you know that yeah. Hux is illegitimate. You know, it's kind of like, you know, is this something that Poe knows and was like, you know, twisting the knife a little, or was he? Yeah, just is it just Poe being Poe? You know, just, yeah. I think my favorite thing. This wasn't shippy at all, but uh, somebody had done a comic where. Poe was trying to pull the whole your mom thing. They were they were like going back and forth on your mom jokes and then Kylo yeah. comes in and it's just like, yeah, say it, Poe. And of course Poe like pulls back then. Yeah. It's just really stupid, but Yeah, no, I remember that comic. It's great. <laughs> I remember a comic about um a uh, Hux like trying to decipher a code for it's like if Leia did all her messages to the first order in emoji, like at Carrie Fisher used to tweet. So you're like, Huck oh, trying to decipher yeah. it. And then Huck, and then Kylo comes in and goes, not again. 
like with this like not again face because it's like all these emojis going, <laughs> you, you know, just going like um, V for you know and then like banana you know stuff like that and this crazy mass of emojis and Hux is desperately trying to decipher it. Speaking of Hux and ships, <laughs> I know none of us are Kylo shippers, but I think we could probably talk about how we might think that dynamic may have changed in how people ship it or how we perceive the ship even at all. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? Like, I mostly, my question thing is, and this is a little spoilery for the Phasma novel, but as far as, like, learning that Hux was in some way complicit in his own father's death, is that something that people have them <laughs> bond over now in fic? <laughs> or, yeah, I just, I'm curious, like, did you guys, have you seen anything as far as Kylox fandom, like, how people are reacting to their new sort of dynamic at all? Well, from what I've witnessed from the Kylux fandom uh, prior to The Last Jedi, is that it was a lot of Hux being in control, like, a lot of Hux doming, and I can't really see that happening after The Last Jedi, considering what Kylo does to him at the end of the movie. There, a lot of them are focusing on the throat choking scene. With, when he declares himself supreme leader mm-hmm. and they're just like yeah hux is totally into that so it's kind of it's kind of switched i think so they that single throat choke has sort of switched it i think i'm not to generalize but i think among the people i've seen they've sort of gone mm, maybe hux is the is the sub it's like it doesn't really have to be a sub and a dumb thing but you know if he's a sub fine that's your headcanon it's definitely changed in terms of in terms of who's in control so to speak in terms of in the ship I've read one uh, Kylux series that I actually enjoy. <laughs> um, and just to answer, go back to like the Phasma thing, even before that book came out, I think the author had actually come up with a similar shitty backstory like involving Hux's father. So I think at least a couple of people in the Kylux fandom had already gone in a similar area maybe not the exact specifics but sort of that yeah having crappy childhood yeah. was something that they bonded over mm-hmm. so i think that was a thread that was already at least mm. there for a couple yeah. of people yeah i think the banter is always going to be there because that's the big thing with kylox i think is their banter and their sort of because that look that they share in the force awakens as um Hux leaves so Snoke can talk to Kylo alone. That fueled so much in terms of banter and sort of like we ha- we hate each other but we secretly love each other sort of banter that that does or, or, exche- or dialogue exchanges that do occur in quite a bit of fic. Like um, I've read a couple of Kylox fix, one in verse and one that was AU, and it like they both had that similar theme of um, of you know that hidden des. God damn it! Why am I so attracted to you? Um, dynamic that that is still prevailing despite um, despite what happened in the Last Jedi. Yeah, there's that, and then there's also the careful Ren. Yeah, I, I know that has been sort of. I think that fueled a lot uh, of common that. thread for a lot of Kylo strippers. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was interesting, like what you would do with that echo of that in um, the Last Jedi when he tries to warn him again, not to let his personal interests, you know, whatever. And this time he just. Mm. shoves him out of the way (laughs) so i'm like um you know i was like does that sort of change too because that's like you know definitely a a pair like a probably pretty deliberate parallel like bit of dialogue but kylo's reaction is much different now that he's in charge because you know that snoke was definitely sort of fueling their antagonism towards each other and now that he's out of the picture what happens you know because Snoke may have been the only thing that kept them from killing each other before. You know, it's like, we don't want to disappoint Dad mm-hmm. completely by killing our brother. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I think it took, um, the only Kylux thing I've really indulged in was just picturing, like, in episode nine, just one scene where Hux, like, really um, spitefully picks holes in Ren's story. So, like, oh, so the girl killed Snoke. Yeah. Oh, and then she killed yes. all the Praetorian Guard. Mm-hmm. That who are all extremely well trained. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and have lightsaber proof armor. Mm-hmm. Are you sure, Ren? And then like Kylo just like 
force <laughs> choked, a force chokes him again or something. So that's the only. I think that's sort of the dynamic. Yeah. That, that's the dynamic that I might ship Kylux from. Is just like really petty, petty stuff. Yeah, it would be kind of interesting, almost like a. I was thinking, like, if you had, like, this Wily e. Coyote almost scenario where Hux is <laughs> Wily e. Coyote and <laughs> Kylo is the Roadrunner. So, um, we haven't talked much about Finrose, and I know oh, we all are cute. into Finrose. Um, because I remember, I mean, I always knew, I was like, I'm gonna ship this, but I had no idea what their dynamic was gonna be. And then seeing those promo pictures that looked like they were gonna have some, like, spark you know some sort of like sparking off of each other rather than just being like oh we're allies i was like yes this yeah. is awesome <laughs> so yeah do you guys have you guys i'm currently sort of writing a thin rose like it's like i have the general premise down and i don't know where i'm gonna take it but i had to get it down have you guys written any thin rose yet yeah i've written two thin rose fix um one is uh, a little smuttier <laughs> and <laughs> uh it is basically went with the prompt uh I think it was like bath time or bathing or something like that. So that goes in a predictable direction. Oh, I read that um, one. And then, there, yeah. and then there was another one where the prompt was uh, dancing. And it basically has me sort of trying to flesh out Finn's backstory a bit. And I basically came up with the headcanon that the First Order had like mandatory <laughs> fun hour. So like <laughs> Finn knows some songs, but they're all like the worst possible versions of these songs. And it's like the same 40 over and over again. And oh so, um, <laughs> and so uh, because I know that uh, Kelly sings, I had sort of one of the things that she does when she's working is sort of like humming and dancing to herself. And uh, so it's basically just them bonding over music and Rose, like when, she tries to get like Finn to sing something. It's like, why did you choose that version? That's the worst version. <laughs> yeah. I I haven't written any Finn Rose yet because I just I'm I don't think I've got a good enough handle on Finn yet. And also I haven't really experimented with writing Rose's point of view yet either. So it's kind of just a bit like eh, dipping my toe into the water. But they are so adorable and they are so cute. And I love the fact that, that Rose it just keeps Finn... Like, I love the fact that there are so many instances in The Last Jedi, especially with Rose, just going, hold your horses! Just sort of with, with, with Finn. So just sort of like saying... Yeah. Like, the whole thing of him, like, I'm going to throw myself in that cannon! And Rose was just like Nick Fury in The Avengers. Like, I recognise the council has made a stupid has made a decision but i but it's a stupid ass decision and i've elected to ignore it so he just slams the ship in, her ship into it and i i do love that i i love that dynamic and i do want to write some finrose i just haven't had any real prompts for it i don't think and i haven't found anything that really sparks but i love that idea of them bonding over music and finn just like having the worst versions pump, pumped into his brain so that poor boy he must have some terrible earworms i could see him also having like versions that were like lyrics changed to be propaganda <laughs> so he could be like oh, yeah. singing like to a tune that she knows but it's like all these lyrics about how the first order is amazing <laughs> yeah there's, i think there's definitely one that uh rose or like he's singing it i think if i remember my own thing correctly uh, where he's singing it and she's like why did you choose that version it's so terrible and so then she sings the version that she knows and there's like a couple of lyrics in it about it like basically like standing up against depression and like burning shit down and just sounds like oh okay i understand why they didn't like that version <laughs> <laughs> another yeah. thing that uh with them that I, this because i love angst and hurting and stuff that i kind of want to either explore myself or want to see explored is the fact that like he was a stormtrooper she lived on a planet that was occupied by stormtroopers for much of her life yeah and then either possibly having either canon divergence they use or just sort of them addressing that issue in canon verse about like maybe possibly having an au where instead of leaving after jakku he was assigned to her planet is sort of like a peacekeeper type role basically just sort of dealing with their backstories by having them meet in a completely different setting and uh having Finn's motivations for leaving the First Order just be sort of slightly different. But, like, also keeping true to Finn as a character where it wouldn't necessarily be these huge ideals at first that sort of give him a direction, but sort of more on a personal level, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. And yeah, I've seen people experiment with the idea that um, Finn is, ends up being from her planet. Like, they find out. Ooh. 
where they finally find out where he came from and it's like mm, oh they're from the same place interesting yeah yeah i i've written finn and rose in my fic but my fic is so <laughs> ridiculously huge that it's hard to find time to actually like focus on them at all but i love their dynamic and i want to explore it more it, uh, strangely enough it seems that i do more uh with uh rose and ben <laughs> <laughs> and and actually like people are really responsible like, because we had talked about kylo and rose before but like out of all of the relationships in my story uh ben and rose are like the third most commented on aspect uh so yeah i think like i love i well first of all i don't think that people were really expecting that we would actually get some canon Finn and Rose. Like we figured mm-hmm. it would be like, Oh, they're going to have sparks, but we got a fucking yeah. kiss. Like it wasn't like a yeah. super passionate one, but still we kind of got canon acknowledgement that, you know, yes, Rose is into Finn and kind of suggestion that he's into <laughs> her. I mean, my whole thing is it's like, okay, so they're at the you know start of this relationship and uh, we'll have to see where it goes from there. But it is interesting because, yeah, after two movies, I've, I'm still mm-hmm. trying to fail out Finn as a character. I, I'm getting to know him. I'm definitely knowing him more now after The Last Jedi mm-hmm. than after The Force Awakens. And, and I mean, I don't think that's a bad thing because I think he is still yeah. trying to figure out who he is. Yeah. And so. I think I personally, when I, when the kiss happened in The Last Jedi, I was just like, Eh, that's not one of the best kisses Star Wars has ever had. Um, but then you realise that she's just slammed her ship into his. She's about to fall unconscious. And it's just basically her brain yeah. going, I have to tell this guy I like him. Okay, I'll just kiss him. Like that. And it's she just like, like she's, she might think, yeah. she could have been like really hurt. She could have died. So basically she thought, if I'm going to die, I'm going to kiss this guy because he's really handsome and I quite like him. I mean, if we were all going to die, we'd kiss John Boyega, so... You and I, re- it, it kind of sticks in my throat when people say, "Oh, Finn, Finn and Rose have no chemistry because the ca- that kiss was so flat and so dispassionate." And you're just like, "That was kind of the point. It was kind of it was a little it's also like Finn's like first. Rian Johnson really yeah. spelled it out when like the massive explosion happening behind it. It was saying that's the spark of something that might be explored. It's shown by the fact that Finn like is looking at her in a completely different way." in the falcon to when he was before because before he was sort of looking at her like oh she's an ally she's quite cool but then she sort of like spelled it out for him that she likes him by kissing him Mm -hmm. and so he's like pulling a blanket over and basically having a really and basically it's such a sweet look that he gives her just sort of like i think i might like you um so like it's 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 like because i think we spent all that all movie with like the passionate torrid nature like gothic romantic nature of Raylo that Finn Rose people are sort of thinking it's the same and it's not it's just a really sweet little ship and then also I think a lot of people are sort of forgetting the fact that this is probably Finn's first kiss ever yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's not gonna be tongue <laughs> he's so like you can see like well, he's really shocked and I don't think it's just shock that like it was Rose that was kissing him. It's sort of the shock of like a first kiss generally. I think when it comes to Finn Rose fic, I really want like <laughs> awkward courtship from Finn's side where it's like, oh, I want to be respectful, but I don't really know what to do. And then just have Rose jump on him and just yes. be like. Yeah, the thing that I've incorporated a little bit in uh, both of my fics is. Both of them being awkward, but Finn definitely sort of being a little more awkward, but then trying to cover it by, like, <laughs> using tips slash imitating oh. Poe. Oh, God. <laughs> he's, trying to, he's trying to be the Poe, but he's not the Poe. <laughs> and we've gotten glimpses of him when he tries to be the cool guy, because when he yeah. does his whole, uh, yeah, with the resistance thing, this is what we look like, yeah. and then also with his... May the force, May the force be, with, be you. with you. <laughs> you, know, so, yeah. you know, he's got that thing where he's like, this is how really confident people speak and talk, you know? I think, to be honest, you could really call the sequel trilogy <laughs> a lot of nerds trying to be cool when really they should just accept their destiny as nerds. All right. Um, yeah, I think my last thing that I had sort of wanted to get into, is there anything that you just sort of like are meh about now or don't really ship anymore? Mm. Huh. Not really? <laughs> yeah. My only big change was that I sort of, like, because I was always a huge multi-shipper, 
like I think the last time we talked about heavily about shipping on the show, I said that Kylo was like my little black dress character that I would ship him with everybody. And now, like since the last Jedi, I can't ship him and Ray with anybody else. Like seriously, ship them. You know, like I'll see art of other things. And I'm like, oh, cool, cute, blah blah blah. But I just think, you know, I just have become like for those two, a mono shipper. But not in a way where yeah. I'm just like, I can't be friends with you if you ship them with anybody else. So I'm just sort of like, no. Nah. I feel like most normal people aren't like that. Yeah, it's just I'm really weird. I'm, I'm the same, like, now. When I, um, I post for The Force Awakens, because there were such, like, springboards, all the characters, I was thinking, yeah, you could ship with Ray, Ray with Phasma, you could ship Ray with, no, like, everything. But honestly, there's such, like, they're so tightly wound within each other, especially with this Force connection, Ray and Kylo, that I'm just sort of like, and eh, no, I can't really. You're like my OTP. Everything else is a ship, but this is the OTP of Star Wars. So, but that's not to say all, any of all the other ships are bad. Yeah. It's just to say, like, because oh, I've always been that sort of mono shipper slash multi shipper. So I'm just sort of like, there's one big pairing that I'm seriously hyper focused and super into. But there are pairings where I'll maybe write one or two fix or maybe even a drabble for them because they're just cute and I like exploring their dynamic. For me it's less about like the extent to which I ship them and just sort of the way in which I ship them, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. So like for Ray and Kylo, it's a lot closer to what's actually happening in Canon. Whereas like I've already talked about before how I really like Canon Divergence fix. I've got like a Finlow fic that I'm working on right now that has them have like a similar backstory, but it the Force Awakens mm-hmm. doesn't happen. They meet and like things start happening before the Force Awakens happens. And like with Finray, I can sort of do it with Canon the way it is now, but if I do if I ever decide to do anything longer than just a couple of one shots, it'll probably be in a Canon Divergence AU. Yeah. So it's like I still ship it very strongly, but if we're going to be dealing with post The Last Jedi canon, it's much stronger Raylo than it is anything else. Yeah, I think with me, I've always been the type where it's like I find my ships and then I focus on them. And that might be one of the reasons why I didn't really do anything post The Force Awakens, because I could see a bunch of different potential with different ships. But I didn't, like, have anything that I really wanted to focus on. And now, post The Last Jedi, it's like, okay, I'm Raylo and Finrose and other ships which are, like, really bizarre and have nothing to do with The Force Awakens or The Last (laughs) Jedi. Uh, But yeah, no, so I've kind of set myself in my ways and it's like, these are going to be the ships that I focus on, so. Probably have stopped shipping Storm Pilot. Because I wasn't really a big storm pilot shipper in the beginning. Like, I thought, oh, that's a cool idea. That's a really cute idea. And also, Oscar, oh, I, you have chemi- so much chemistry with everyone. How do you manage this? How does one man have so much chemistry? chemistry with his drawing. I know! He has, like, you can literally <laughs> ship O and BB-8. And, like, I don't know how you do that. But that's that's a, that's a, that, that's another podcast. Oh, you can find a way, believe me. I know a hardcore Poe BB-8 shipper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's another podcast. I think BB-8, poor BB-8 would be scandalised. But, you know, so I was kind of like, yeah, I, I do ship it. But I think I love Amelin and Poe so much that it's just like, no, that superseded Storm Pilot. I'm sorry. It, it's interesting how I've how I stopped <clears throat> shipping Storm Pilot and started shipping Amelin Poe simply because of the one word, Flyboy. I'm such trash. Oh, wow. I'm so predictable. <laughs> And then, so we can indulge our Raylo stuff just for a little bit, and we didn't talk about this um, at the beginning when we talked about feeling inspired or things that have changed. So the Force Bond, this was, I thought this was an interesting journey with Raylo shippers because we figured out that it might happen, like, pretty early on that their connection, what happened during the interrogation might lead to some sort of connection between them. And, you know, so there was lots of Force Bond fix for a while, the first year, and then people, you know, we started getting more info about the movie, and we kind of were like, okay, guys, we should, like, this might be kind of dumb to have it be literally they can talk to each other and interact with each other, and blah, 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 so people kind of backed away from it, (laughs) and then (laughs) we got the movie, and it was just like, oh, okay, thanks, Ryan, what the fuck? (laughs) They can straight up touch each other. (laughs) Because that's canon now, that they can, like, touch each other, so for Fick, that just is, like... 
we had, we were already sort of doing that, but knowing now that yeah, this isn't totally out of left field that they could literally like have sex. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, like... I, feel, I think it was everyone's first thought. <laughs> oh my yeah, God. I feel like in general for the Raylo fandom, a lot of it wasn't so much like our head cans getting jossed. It was more like you've got to learn to dream a little bigger, darling. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sort of started off. <laughs> It was that. Because we were all like convinced that they were literally, we were going to get like one tiny positive moment in between this massive battle. And then we got like three Force One scenes, and, o- and in only <laughs> one of them did Ray try to kill him. It was like amazing. We were like, okay, no, I expect her to shoot him. No, wait a minute. Why aren't you telling Luke? Why is this suddenly turning <laughs> gothic romance all of a sudden? Why is this turning into sort of like, oh no, I have a secret, I sec- I have a secret space boyfriend. It's like, <laughs> why is this turning into this? So it's like, it really funny. And then when she started doing that voiceover, yeah, and, and I was like, I expected this it to be Luke. Star Wars. Yeah, and then, I expected if she was talking to anybody yeah. that it would be Luke, that she was finally going to him. Yeah. And then it was like, and then it pa- and then it cut straight to Kylo. I was like, okay, this is very new for Star Wars. I mean, I can't, this is this is amazing. Uh, coming from it as somebody who did was not like a hardcore Raylo shipper before. I mean, I appreciated it mostly because you know I'm friends with a- April and Petra. How could I not appreciate it? Uh, but yeah, like this movie, it's like if you didn't ship it before, like how can you? You either ship it now or you hate the entire movie, which I guess is how things have really shaken out. Yeah, you can't actually oh, escape him, I'm afraid. <laughs> and Ray doesn't want to escape him. She oh ships him. To, she yeah, ships and him I mean, like, the, the, so. the way that the scenes work is that it is an actual build over the course of the movie. Like, it is, like, the slow relationship that forming because the first first thing, she's just like, I'm going to kill you. And he's trying to control her. And then the next time, they're just kind of fucking irritated at each other and, you know, yelling at each other. And then you're slowly getting into the, <laughs> oh, we're going to touch hands and you're not alone and shipping yourself off to your new boyfriend yeah. with, with a new makeover, too. The thing is, I was watching uh, I was watching a version of The Last Jedi because I was getting a bit impatient. So not waiting the, that patiently after all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not waiting that patiently. Um, but the thing is, what I forgot was that because there's like literally what I forgot was that the first shot that you see, like the beginning shot that you see, that of Ray like lying back in the in in the um pod, wait in the escape pod, waiting for uh, waiting for it to be opened, is that it literally yeah. looks like she's in a bed, like in the dark, waiting for like her husband or something to come in on their wedding night or something it really looks like like something from a medieval medieval drama or something i was just like ryan how fucking overture are you how fucking obvious <laughs> are you mate <laughs> you could just like literally you could take the last <laughs> jedi delete all the scenes and just have ryan holding a sign saying i ship raylo <laughs> and it would be the same movie has anybody written a fic of them fucking in that escape pod yet? I'm actually working on that fic, but it's really difficult because it's just like I have to get them to because they're obviously virgins, so I have to get them to break their break their virginity, then work out how to use an escape pod when Kylo is as big as a brick house. <laughs> you know, so it's just like, oh god, this is difficult. Is Ray obviously a virgin? Like Kylo, I have no problem believing he's a virgin, but Ray, I'm still like, uh, I don't know. I think she's had a couple of fumbles. I think after this, I was yeah, I was sort of like on the oh maybe she fooled around train before, but like just some of the ways that she interacts with him, I kind of am like she's thirsty as yeah. hell. She knows <laughs> what desire is, but I don't. Oh think yeah, that obviously she's gone there completely. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, but that's just me. I mean, you know, if you still want to, I know I love your spacer head cannon still too. So you know. Yeah, well, I mean, like I, 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 I had that like a long time ago but yeah. i mean i certainly didn't follow that in my fic where i had them both be awkward virgins and yeah. she's just like really thirsty for them yeah i don't think we have to get too oh god is she thirsty the same <laughs> she's so oh my god that's another oh my god daisy ridley is amazing in that scene with the with the two with shirtless kylo just literally like why did you hate your fa- father yeah. <laughs> it's a wonderful, wonderful delivery. So it's just like, that little hitch, like it's kind of exaggerated by fandom, but just that little hitch in her breath that she realizes, oh shit, he's hot, he's shirtless. 
Okay. Um, I still hate you. But oh my god, how big I are you? That was something that Rainbow <laughs> Shippers were also kind of thrown for a loop. Is that we were always like, oh, Kylo's going to be the pursuer, <laughs> and it's like, nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really funny thing. Is that like we all had Ray as sort of like you know um, the damsel in distress kind of like, and sort of like. And Kylo was like the relentless hunter, the relentless pursuer. And meanwhile, it's like Kylo's like Lady Bloody Godiva in his tower, and Ray's just like the knight banging on the door. Okay, I've come to take your virginity. <laughs> it's like like that, and, it, and it's just like, and you're just like, okay, wow, this is not what I. I expected. don't know. I always expected you know? Kylo to be an awkward virgin. Oh yeah, that was me as well. <laughs> well that was that, but I yeah. I think that we mostly thought that we didn't think that Ray would be the one that was at like yeah, super thirsty yeah. it was always sort of like yeah he might be a virgin but he's also the one that's like okay i want to lose my virginity yeah. to you and i'm gonna do whatever it takes to get there or whatever yeah ray is definitely thirsty it's just so funny how kylo was like ripped from the pages of Victor- of a victorian <laughs> novel and ray's just like the ray's Totally, Ray's like 21st century. He's 1800s. You know, he's just he's sort of like, oh my god, I saw her ankle, and, he's yeah. just, and, she, and she's just like, oh my god, I saw your pecs. Show me more of your pecs. Um. So, do we have any thoughts that we want to wrap up with? I just sort of wanted to reiterate that, uh, even like beyond sort of railroad shipping, I feel like the last Jedi did a really good job for me for all of my ships, just simply because a some characters didn't exist before so like Rose and uh, Amelyn Holdo but then also just generally because it made a lot of these characters more 3D and because I sort of ship based on potential and not necessarily like oh these two are going to get together or whatever that even just having characters feel more well-rounded and more have more of a backstory just gave me a lot more fuel that I didn't necessarily have at the end of The Force Awakens. Yeah, I, I would say that as well, because apart from my Raylo rambling, which happens, I'm, I do apologise. The Last Jedi did an amazing job, because I think it unlocked something for certain characters for me. Like, it definitely unlocked Poe's character for me, because before, he was literally, he was two-dimensional, he was flat as a pancake, he really was. He was flat as a crepe, if you like. And I, I couldn't really connect with him at all, as let a, a, a nothing more than a side character, or like a mention in a thick, maybe. But um, but the Last Jedi just added so many layers to him because they get because it it broke beyond the mold of 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 heroic pilot. And I really like how how the movie just went. You know your expectations, put them at the door because this is actually what the characters are going through, and these are their pains and their flaws. And and if you love them brilliant because we love them as much as you do um but if you don't love them then i'm sorry that you i'm sorry that we didn't manage to live up to your expectations and i think that's what i love about the last jedi is that it is so meta because it 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 made to quote an article it made star wars unsafe and that's the best thing about it is because it is not supposed to be safe because it, like its whole thing was that it was it it was so out out there that's why it captured people's imagination and is such a has been such a presence for 40, 40 odd years, you know? So yeah, I think Last Jedi carries on that tradition and I am so glad to have all these ships to feed on for the next two years. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sorry. it's okay. That's... I'm too no, passionate. No, no, it's problem. passion. Is, there's nothing wrong with passion. You, like, summed it up really nicely. I think that wraps us up for this roundtable. I'd, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us, talking to us about Thick and After the Last Jedi. Well, we'll see you all next month. I'd like to thank Eleanor and Bronwyn for joining us on this month's podcast and also a thanks to my wonderful co-host April. I think this roundtable went really well. Also, big shout out to everyone who volunteered to be on this roundtable. I'm sorry we couldn't get everyone on. Uh, really, me editing this for more than four or five people just becomes way too much. But if you would like to tell us, you know, your opinion on shipping, 
post The Last Jedi, please drop us a line on Tumblr at trashcompactorpodcast.tumblr.com, on Twitter at SWTrashPodcast, on our website at trashcompactorpodcast.com, or you can contact us through good old-fashioned email at thetrashcompactorpodcast at gmail.com. We'll read any comments on the air and uh, love to have a conversation going. So next month, I will be joined by uh, several of my Rebels loving friends and we'll be talking about the end of this wonderful landmark show in the Star Wars animated canon. So until then, may the Force be with you. Oh, 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 oh.